Hello everybody! Welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm gonna share with you the step-by-step -step process and requirements to apply for a K-1 visa. I went to this process a year ago and I thought I could share with you my knowledge and experience to also help the couples who are going to do the same process. So without further ado, let's get to it! a K-1 visa or fiancé visa. Um, it is a visa issued to a fiancé or fiancé of a U.S. citizen to enter the United States and to marry his or her U.S. citizen petitioner within 90 days upon arrival. So once the couple marries, the foreign fiancé can adjust status to become a lawful permanent resident of the United States or what we call green card holders. So before you start the process, you should know first if you are eligible to file a K-1 visa. What are the K-1 visa eligibility requirements? Number one, the petitioner must be a U.S. citizen. So the petitioner must be able to prove that he or she is a U.S. citizen. That means green card holders are not eligible to file a K-1 visa. And number two, be legally free to marry. If either of you were previously married, you will need to provide proof that your marriage was legally terminated, such as divorce decree or death certificate of the prior spouse. Number three, intend to marry within 90 days. You need to provide proof that you seriously intend to get married. The easiest way to accomplish this is for both of you to write a statement of intent to get married and attach them to your I-129F petition. Number four, the couple must prove that they have physically met in person at least once within the last two years. This doesn't mean they need to know each other for two years, just that within the last two years, they have met. Number five, meet the income requirement. So the U.S. citizen petitioner must disclose his or her financial ability. The reason for this is to show that the petitioner earns enough money to support the immigrating fiancé or fiancée and to prevent him or her from becoming a public charge. So you can check the poverty guidelines chart to determine the minimum financial requirements for a K-1 fiancé visa. If you pass all these eligibility requirements, then you can now start the application. Next, what are the steps to apply for K-1 visa? Number one, make a cover letter. This should list the petition's contents and a complete description of what you are petitioning. Of course, do not forget to sign and date the letter. Number two, fill out the form I-129F petition for alien fiancé. The petitioner must submit the form I-129F for alien fiancé. You can download this form in the official USCIS website provided at the bottom of this video. Number three, I'll provide the I-129F supplement Page 8, Part 2, Question 54, Explanation of Meeting. The petitioner must provide a statement describing how you first met and how the relationship grows. No need to include intimate or private information just to make sure to provide enough details about your relationship. Number 4, Letter of Intent to Marry. Both the petitioner and beneficiary will provide a letter intending to marry each other within 90 days. Number five, proof of meeting. These are the supporting documents to describe how and when you and your fiancé or fiancé met during the past two years. So the evidence can include photos together and photos together with family and friends. Copies of plane tickets, boarding passes, when you visited with your fiancé or fiancé. And also, you can also provide copies of your passport showing the stamps from your travels, movie tickets, receipts of gifts for each other, hotel bookings, receipt of engagement ring, or photo of the engagement ring. You can also 
Provide the copies of cards, letters for each other, screenshot of text, messages, chats, email, talking about the relationship and marriage plans. Don't have to include the intimate or private conversation. Just pick the ones that you think would be a good proof. Also, the screenshot of video chats or calls in Facebook Messenger, Skype, or any other apps you use to communicate with each other. You can also provide the evidence of wedding announcements or arrangement, if there is any. Number six, this is optional, which is the statement of witnesses. It is not mandatory to submit a witness statement from your friends and families when you file a petition for alien fiancé. However, I highly recommend that you do for the purpose of a strong supporting documentation of your genuine relationship. Number seven, proof that you are legally able to marry. If previously married, provide a copy of divorce decree, annulment order, or death certificate of four prior spouse. Number eight, proof of petitioner's U.S. citizenship. Either a copy of birth certificate or valid passport, certificate of naturalization, or certificate of citizenship, whatever is applicable. Number nine, proof of legal name change. This is only applicable if either party has had other legal names. Number 10, evidence to support an IMBRA or International Marriage Broker Regulation Act waiver. This is only applicable if you have met through a marriage broker. Number 11, copies of police and court records. This is only applicable if either party has been convicted of certain crimes number 12 one passport size photos two by two inches in size so both the petitioner or the u.s citizen and the beneficiary or foreign national will provide one color passport style photograph taken within 30 days of you filing the petition so make sure to put your name at the back of the photo Number 13, the filing fee of $535, pay it through money order, personal check, or cashier's check, and address it to U.S. Department of Homeland Security. Cash is not accepted. So number 14, um, you can also fill out the form G1145, Notification of Acceptance of Application or Petition. This e-notification form is optional, but I strongly recommend this so you can get notification from USCIS via text or email as soon as they receive your packet. And the most important thing is to make a photocopy or save a soft copy of everything. It is essential that everything you send to the USCIS should have a duplicate. So the last step is to send your application. So you can check the USCIS website uh, where to file your application. Okay, I hope I was able to help you and good luck to your application. Bye!